everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, and this is a special edition floss tube. Um, this one is going to be about Halloween, fall, up to Thanksgiving, harvest, um, a video all about all of these things. Um, whips, finishes, haul, stash, plans. Lincoln, you know, Lincoln always has to come in and say hi when I start. Um, so anyway, so buckle in. This is my favorite, favorite time of the year. And this is my favorite subject to stitch, particularly like Halloween. I feel like I'm not centered. Sorry. Move a little bit. Okay. Um, so if you love Halloween stitching as much as I do, like I am sure um, there is something here for you. So, um, I'm very excited and I have been stitching up a storm of Halloween stuff. I think the format I'm going to do is I'm going to show you finishes and then, um, whips, things I've kitted up ready to start and then stash that, you know, is sitting here for someday, but maybe not plans to start it immediately or this year. Um, I was talking with my friend Amy. She's Gables Stitcher on Instagram and on FlossTube. And you should go check her out because she actually had, um, she did a similar video where she showed all her like Halloween stash and her plans and um, it was very enabling. Um, but you should, so you should go check that out. I actually had posted, um, I don't even know like quite what I did, but somewhere in YouTube I posted like, go look at this video. So you might have seen that already. Um, anyway, we were we were talking about how much we love to stitch Halloween stuff and how we want to stitch like all the things. And I was tossing around the idea of doing like 13 Halloween starts in October. Um, just because 13 is kind of like a spooky number, Friday the 13th. And I decided, I was like, I can't, I just can't do that. I, I want to desperately, but like I have, I'm at 95 whips right now and I'm, I want to whittle that down. I have several small things that I can finish, um, and get that number down a little bit. And I was like, if I do 13, I'm going to go over a hundred and I just can't do it. I like that for me is like, I, I know I have essentially a hundred whips cause I have 95 whips. It might as well be a hundred, but it's just one of those things where it's like just that number. Like I don't want to cross because it just like <sighs> gives me hives. <laughs> so I don't want to go over a hundred whips. And so I was like, I don't think I should do that. Um, and she's like, well, let's just focus on like finishing things. And I was like, well, I still want to like start some things. Like I don't want to just do finishing. And so what we decided, and, and this is not by any means like an original idea. Other people out there have this idea. I believe Michelle Cozieg and Emily Eclectic Possessions actually do this already. And that is um, on the 13th of every month. I think, I don't know if they do a new start on the 13th of every month, but they do, you know, dark stitching on the 13th of every month. And Amy and I decided maybe next year, 2020, we'll do a new Halloween-ish start on the 13th of every month. And so that way we can still get like those starts. We can still stitch on things we love to stitch on, but that gives us some time in the meantime to have some finishes. And hopefully that'll be the case. I'll have some finishes and then I won't go over a hundred. Um, we'll see. But that's kind of what I think we both decided we'll do next year. So if any of you want to jump in, like we don't have a hashtag or anything. And like I said, it's not an original idea. But if any of you would like to jump in um, and do Halloween stitching on the 13th, whether it's a whip or a new start, um, that'll be super fun and awesome. And you should do it. So um, that's that's that. That's my plans. Um before I get into this stash, I want to show you guys a couple of things because I get comments every video about stuff like this. And also if I sound congested, I am. Um, I don't have like a full on cold, but for the last couple of days I've had this like 
post nasal drippy thing like I'm going to get a cold but I don't have one yet and I hope I don't um, but I'm definitely like stuffed up um what did I want to show oh I want to show you guys my shirt um I made this myself last year I went and bought iron on letters made myself in a muck a muck shirt and then I wanted to talk about my eye makeup very quickly because I know some of you could care less about makeup but I get um, comments in every video about my makeup. Thanks guys, that's so sweet. Um, and again, I like real brief because I know a lot of you don't care. Um, but last video, a lot of you commented on my eye makeup and I'm wearing the same palette this video. So I just wanted to show you. It's Too Faced Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice palette. This palette actually came out last year, but I just got it HSN was having a deal um, this palette with a lip gloss and an eye makeup brush and I I can't remember what I paid for it like 50 something maybe um, which I know some of you are like <gasps> pearl clutching but um, these prestige brands like Urban Decay and Too Faced um, these their palettes tend to run about $44 so that's not an outrageous sum anyway here's what the palette looks like and it's just very warm like orangey and burgundy tones and I wore that in last video and I have that on this video so I just wanted to throw that out there um, in case anybody was wondering I thought it was a really good deal HSN if you want it and um, it is worth word of warning it's pumpkin spice um, scented and I know some people hate pumpkin spice so keep that in mind um, the palette is, I, I can't really smell, it's super vague, like I don't really smell pumpkin spice, but the lip, uh, lip gloss, which I have on, this is super pumpkin spicy, just heads up. It's very cinnamony. Okay, let's get to like this stuff, that's what you're here for. So let me show you like previous finishes and some new finishes that I just showed you in my last video if you watched that one. Um, the very first one I didn't stitch. I rescued this from a thrift store and this isn't Halloween. This is Thanksgiving, but I'm doing all the fall autumn stuff this video. So um, this is my only save the stitches. Everything I've come across since then has been like precious moments or, you know, like the 80s ducks and stuff. So I haven't found anything worth rescuing since then. But this one I did rescue um, about three years ago from a local thrift store. And I think I paid like a couple dollars for it. It's professionally framed in Houston, Texas. Um, it's stitched with 1957. So I, I don't know if it was really stitched then or... I mean, it had to be, right? But I thought it was interesting because it's on a linen. Um, I don't really know what kind of stitching people were doing in the 50s. The only stitching I really know about is like, you know, really old samplers on linen. And then like the 80s, like I guess in the 80s, there was some resurgence in cross stitch and everybody was on Ada. So... I don't know. I'm thinking it's original though. Um, one fun thing is she crosses her X's in different ways, depending, I guess, on what mood she's in. But this is um, on my mantle for Thanksgiving and I love it. And I just, I've talked about this before in videos. I just really love that I was able to um, give that a new life. You know, it was at the thrift store obviously the family I don't know the story but you know somebody was like okay we're we're done with this um but you know it's possibly like 70 years old and it's just weird to me that you know people I mean I I, I can see why people would throw stuff away I guess but it just makes me sad um and so I just love that I'm giving it a home and it's loved and appreciated now um, because I don't really know, like, the story of, of why it was at the thrift store. And if I didn't buy it, like, that's the other thing I, w I wonder about, because people are like, oh, donate it to the thrift store and someone else can love it. But, like, if nobody buys it, like, what happens to it? Because, like, 
the thrift store doesn't hold on to that forever. So after a while, does it go to like the landfill or like what, you know, I don't know. Um, random thoughts. Okay. Another finish. I showed this last video. This is, um, Scarlet House Pumpkins and Bittersweet. And I finished it on this milk jug thingy <laughs> that I got from Michael's. It was like, I think it was like $14.99 and it was 50% off or something. So it was under $10. Um, it came with the twine and the little tag on it already. And, um, I used some homespun and some particle board, cardboard stuff and glued it on there, which was about as challenging as you can imagine because this is round. Um, I used E6000, but I actually like glued it and then, well, first I like molded it. Um, so it was curved and then I glued it and I tied, um, I used big fabric strips to like tie this as it, as it set. This is on 40 count primitive hair, old, um, old Massachusetts linen, which is like my favorite. I love that linen so much. And I bought this pattern at U count in, um, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I bought it because she had a model on the wall, but she stitched it on like 28 count. It was way bigger, obviously, because this is 40 count, but it was like way bigger. And so when I started stitching this, I was like, oh my God, it's so tiny. And then I was like, I know just what I'm going to do with that. Um, what else? And then also shown in my last video was this Good Morning Maui pattern from Etsy. It's Hocus Pocus. And it's the... Sanderson sisters from the movie Hocus Pocus and I recharted the same to say oh look another glorious morning makes me sick. This is on 28 count Monaco that I hand dyed myself and I just finished it as a pillow finish and this trim glows in the dark and I got it at Joann's and um I love that. Um okay and then now, um, I just had a finish and you guys haven't seen, well, I showed this in my last video, but it was still a whip. Um, so I just finished this last night. This is Michelle Garrett's pattern. Her, um, her design, um, name is Bendy Stitchy. This is Bendy Stitchy Hildy's Brew. And I just finished it. And I actually, um, changed, I didn't have the Threadworks autumn leaves that she did the border in. So I did mine in a DMC Caloris. I don't have it right in front of me, um, but it's purple and green and I just thought that would work. So here is my finish. And this is hand, this is a uh, linen I dyed. It's 32 count linen and I dyed it myself. I wanted it to be a little more like mottled and variegated, but it turned out almost just like a solid color. There's very subtle variegation. Um, I think I'm going to do a pillow finish on her because, um, I just think I will. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this same glow in the dark trim because it's just so Halloween and perfect. So I think I'm going to trim it the same. Um, this has some DMC Etoile in it and I am like obsessed with DMC Etoile now. I want to stitch everything in it, but it does not show up on video. <laughs> So, um, the, these, uh, steam smoke plumes are DMC Etoile Blanc, and I don't know if you can see any sparkle at all, but, um, in real life, there is sparkle, but it's subtle. It's not like Krynik sparkle, but it's just, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. I want to stitch everything in it. I actually went and bought a few colors, um, when I was at Michael's. Like, just because they were so pretty, I couldn't resist them. But I have, like, nothing in mind. Um, but they're just so pretty. So this is 820, which is probably my favorite DMC color. 550 and 814. And they're just so, like, these beautiful, rich jewel tones with this very beautiful, subtle sparkle. I love them. Obsessed. So what I want to do is I want to do um, a monochrome sampler, like a prairie moon or like something like that. 
um, and just do them, like, do one, like, in one of these colors. Oh, I think it would look amazing. Okay, so preview, um, wait, one more current finish, sorry, I forgot about this one. Um, this is Caterpillar Cross Stitch Hello Pumpkin, and I made this into a big, huge pillow. And this is on 32 count Bo Peep Sheep by Dames of the Needle with all the called for DMC. And it's super cute, but it took forever to stitch, but it's just very cute. Um, so <laughs> one little thing I want to mention, um, a lesson I learned um, this year. So I usually, when I've done pillows before, I've done the um, bead, the, like the pellet um, stuffing. And these were my first two pillow finishes that I just used plain old like polyfill cotton, um, like um, polyfill, like just stuffing, stuffing. And I've seen, I've like seen tutorials and stuff where they talk about doing like an interfacing on your stitching. And I'm lazy and I never did that. And it didn't matter when I used the pellets. It like seriously wasn't a big deal. But it matters when you use polyfill. So I just want to like give you guys a, a warning. Um, anything I make in the future that I stuff with polyfill, I will do interfacing. Because um, it pokes through. So I have no idea if you'll be able to see this, but look at, there's like little fuzzies on here. It's the stuffing. The stuffing pokes through and a lint roller doesn't help. It just pulls more out. So, um, so there's a reason for the interfacing. I thought it was so that your stitching wouldn't like stretch, like your linen wouldn't stretch. And maybe that is it, but um, more importantly, I think it's in, um, so that your stuffing doesn't um, pop through. So I'm just going to live with that. Like, I'm not going to redo it. Um, and I didn't even learn my lesson. And then I did my pillow and like the same thing happened. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's little, there's little polyester like stuffing bits poking out. So um I'm lazy, so those will just be like that for the rest of their lives. But anything I do in the future, such as Hildy's brew, I'm going to make sure I use that interfacing. <laughs> okay, so previous finishes. So last year, I finished this. I love this so much. This is Barbara Anna Hocus Pocus. And this one I stuffed with the pellets and um, I just did a homespun on the back and I used, um, it had, it called for, I think like fancy floss, like classic color works. And I just um, substituted whatever I had in stash. So I didn't use plain old DMC, but I don't think I used any of the called for, but I just got, you know, whatever was close. And it's hard. I'm trying to figure out how to hold it so you guys can see it well there. Maybe that'll work. Um, it's so cute. It was, um, when I, when I was looking at like the model on the, the pattern, for some reason, I really felt like it was going to be bigger than this. So when I started stitching it, I was kind of shocked how tiny it was, but I love it still. I just thought it was going to be more like something bigger that I would frame. And then it was so small. I was like, well, that's a pillow. Um, the linen is a third is like, I think a 36 count, maybe a 40 count. It's a mystery linen, but my best guess is it's, um, something like, um, what's that one called? Country. No, it's not country mocha. I don't know what it is. I think it feels like a lakeside linen. I don't know. It's a mystery. It's just a nice, beautiful neutral with very subtle modeling. Anyway, how cute is that? I'm still debating if I want to put trim on this. I thought I did, but now I'm like, maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep it like that. Um, also, I think I finished from last year. This is a Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It says, I love fall most of all. And it's all the called for DMC. Um, and I might, but it calls for like maybe one classic color works that has some variegation. And I might have 
subbed that out with something I had in stash. So like the fall and the border are a variegated. So I just grabbed something that looked close, if not exactly what it called for. It's on a little easel that I got at Michael's for like a buck or two. It just fit perfect. Like, look at that. It fit perfectly. Um, super cute. And then, um, I think I also finished this last year. This is, um, I have the pattern here to show you guys when I get to stash. Um, but I can't, it's like, it's mixed in here somewhere. So, oh, here it is. My favorite, it's hands to work, my favorite primitive stitching bags. And there's a Christmas one and the Halloween one. And then one is like just no not seasonal. Um, so that's stash. I'm sh I'll just show you that now. I have no idea if you can still get that. I found it at my crafty thrift store. So I um I believe this is a 36 count, and I think I used um you know it looks like DMC. Did I use DMC on that? It's got to be because I don't see any variegation. So I guess I use DMC. And it's a mystery linen. And I love it. I love it. Um, this is a good example that, you know, DMC can be great. Like I tend, I have to remind myself that because stuff like this, I tend to go like, I'm not using DMC. I'm going to um, you know, pull color and cotton and, and my fancy floss. And that's great. But sometimes DMC like looks awesome on its own. It doesn't always need that variegation. This, um, board I finished it on is from Michael's. You can still get them. Okay. And then, um, a finish from a couple years ago, another frosted pumpkin. This is pumpkin spice and everything nice. Um, super cute. And again, I used the called for DMC, but I subbed the, the, the one like color and cotton or, or classic color works. I subbed with like a DMC variegated. And I finished this on another like little easel and I just hot glued some, what do you call that stuff? Garland? What do you call those? Whatever. Fake flower stuff, you know. From Michael's or Joanne's or something. Okay. That's all of my finishes. Let me show you my whips. I got a lot of them. Like a lot. Okay. So I showed this in my last video. This is Lakeside Needlecraft Spooky Halloween. You guys um, went nuts for this one. I totally understand because I did too. Like somehow I had never seen this pattern. And then once I did, I was like, I need it. I want it. I want it right now. I need to start it right now. I dyed my own 28 count Monaco. Um, and I actually, I showed this in my last video, but I worked on it one more night since then, so I got more done. So it's just DMC 310 and then three colors of the DMC um, light effects, which are difficult to work with because they're like nylon or something. Um, but the white glows in the dark, which is really cool. And I did test that out last night. It really does glow in the dark. Unfortunately, this won't be done this year, <laughs> but it's such a cool pattern. The reason like I had to have it was because I was obsessed with this creepy jack-o'-lantern right here, but I love the like spooky houses too. And the little owl, it's just a really cool pattern. Um, but yeah, I posted this on Instagram and you guys were like flipping out. So if you want the pattern, you can actually get it as a PDF. So you can go buy it and have it like now. You don't even have to wait. It's Lakeside Needlecraft's website. It's a Euro, it's a, a UK company, but P, 
you can buy it like with PayPal and she'll email you the PDF. Um, I think the, with the conversion, I want to say it was somewhere around 10 bucks. So then, um, another whip is wild violet cross stitch, um, the witch house in Salem. And this calls for just three DMC colors. I think it's black, ecru, and 3849 is the tealy color. I'm stitching mine. I am playing like border chicken on mine. I'm stitching on this little tiny um, piece of fabric that Leslie from Under the Sea um, Fabrics sent me in like an ornament pack. <laughs> I think it's um, I think it's like a 20. I think it's a 22 count. And I'm doing it one, one over one. So it's like tiny. I wanted it to be like a teeny tiny little thing. So look how little it's going to be. Um, I really was hoping I could get that knocked out this year, but like, you know, I mean, it's not a ton of stitching and I made a good start, but like other things are calling, you know how that goes. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, next I have Quiltify Designs, which is an Etsy seller, and um, this is the All Souls Band. And this I don't necessarily think is just Halloween, but like with the skulls, like it fits the season. But um, I would display that year round personally. I'm stitching it on an Under the Sea fabric by Leslie. Um... It is called Heaven's Fury. Heaven's Fury. And it's a 40 count linen. And I bring this up because I think Garrett Coffee Stitcher is stitching something on Heavy's, Heaven's Fury. But he got a 32 count Lugana. And his looks like a totally different fabric. It's way, way, way like lighter and paler than mine, which makes sense because Lugana doesn't take dye very well. But um, I thought it was interesting how different his looked. I love mine. So this is, oh, look at that. Oh, this is Heaven's Fury. Is that not gorgeous? And I am stitching it with a DMC 115, which is a beautiful red variegated floss. And um, here is how much I had done on that. So that's one color of floss, but look how much like difference I get in that, which I like. It's very pretty. Um, I would, like I said, I would stitch that year round for sure. Um, these aren't in any particular order, so there might be some... Um, fall and Halloween and autumn, like all mixed up. Um, the next one is Rosewood Manor Quaker Autumn Quakers. And I'm doing this with the called for, um, it called for doubloon, 28 count picture this plus a doubloon. And that's what I bought. And I'm doing it with the Valdani thread pack. So um, this is going to be like exactly all the called for, which I rarely do. And here's how far I got on that, which is not, not terribly far. It's a beautiful pattern. It's really fun to stitch because the Valdani's are really, really pretty. Um, this one I showed in my last video and I haven't made any additional progress since then because I haven't stitched on it in the last three days or whenever it was that I filmed my video. Um, this is from the Blackbird Design Sisters book, which I highly recommend this book. I want to stitch everything in it. Um, this is at First Cox Crow and I am stitching this on 40 count color and cotton sampler gold which is absolutely beautiful i feel like i could stitch like everything on sampler gold especially beautiful for halloween so something just flew by my window it is crazy windy out today we have like a wind warning um anyway this is how far i got on it like isn't that fabric gorgeous Whew, so pretty that is so pretty um 
There are other pieces in here that are super Halloween-ish, so I'll go ahead and just show them to you. Um, this is the first sampler. They actually don't have a, so the two samplers, um, which were the two sisters, they don't have um, a picture of the finished like recharting they did. They only have a picture of the original. Um, and they did make changes with their, re it's, not a, it's not a reproduction, it's like an inspired by. Um, but this is A Shields 1824. And like I said, the way they charted it was like mostly the same, but a few changes. And then this is H Shields, her sister, 1823. And there's the original and again the one they did they did change up a little bit i already showed you at first caught crow which was an original sampler that they did and then um they randomly put a christmas sampler in this halloween book so this is peace and plenty and then the last sampler is halloween ish ish again and this is called witch no more and i this is my favorite one in the book but I haven't started it yet. And look at this floss list, you guys. Look at that. That's actually obnoxious, Barb and Alma. Like, I'm just saying, like, really? Why? why so many like why does it really need that many the good news is I think I own almost like all of these like one two three I mean there's like maybe five I don't have but still Whew. that's some kind of floss list there okay um also shown in my last video Halloween at Hollyberry Farm by Stacy Nash very popular pattern I am doing it all like with convert. I, I'm not doing any called for. I dyed my own fabric. I dyed my own floss. Here's my fabric, which turned out so awesome. And here is how far I got on the humongous house. That will take nine million years to stitch. Okay, so that's like all the stuff I showed you guys last time too. And so now this will be like new stuff yay so um this is black sky by the primitive needle and this is my working copy but i think you can still see pretty well and this calls for a whole bunch of um silks um what was the company of the the silk company is i don't even know if you can still get pure palette pure palette i think you can still get them but they can be kind of hard to find um so I did a conversion like to like mostly like weeks and like whatever classic color works whatever I had around and I'm stitching this on x design fabric and I'm obsessed with this fabric it was a fabric of the month in September last year it's called cinnamon roll it's a 36 count it's called cinnamon roll I don't know if she made makes this fabric like outside of you know, cause it was a fabric of the month. I don't know if this is one that she dies now, like that you can get <coughs> anytime, excuse me. I would buy this again. I love it. Look at this fabric. It's like grungy, brownish, yellowish. It's perfect for like a primitive needle. Here's how far I've got on this one. Which is not terribly far. And I want to thank Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, for bringing to my attention. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, that these diamonds up here, there are like, so the border ends up going all the way across. There are like three times where she puts three spaces in between the diamonds instead of two spaces. So if anyone is stitching this pattern, like watch out for that. I totally missed that. I spaced these all two apart. So I'm going to have to make up, I think like, you know, one in here is supposed to be like three spaces. So I'm just going to have to make it up like later in the border. But if anyone else is working on that, heads up. 
I really want to get back to that one. I haven't stitched on it in a while and I absolutely adore it. So this one, um, I felt like was a little, I almost didn't include it, but then the more I looked at it, I was like, I, it has an autumnal feel to me. This is Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess. Absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, there's nothing like innately like saying she's fall, but I think, I think she works for fall. She's so pretty. She came out in the summer, but like I said, I think she's fall. I'm doing all the like called for charted stuff on her, except for the fabric I chose is picture this plus, um, gossamer. And which I think is looking really, really good. It's this like kind of limey yellow, pastel limey though. Um, and here's how far I got on her before I put her away. I don't know how well all that Krynik is going to show up, but it's like, she's so sparkly. All the blank spots are where beads are going to go. I do want to get her back out. She's so pretty. And I love, teal is like such a fun color for me to stitch. I don't know why. I just like it. I like stitching. I like stitching like 3810, like is... A color that I love stitching with. What a, oh, this one I actually like feel really guilty about because this is an old whip for me. Like I started this in um, I think 2017 and I just feel bad. Like it, it's been a whip for a long time but there's a lot of stitching in this pattern. This is Plum Street Samplers Jack's Bash. Which is a really popular pattern. Um, I think another reason I hesitate to get back to this one is because I did buy all the called for gentle arts for it, which is quite a few, but then I poached them for other projects. So like none of them are with the pattern anymore. And then I like really stress that I don't have enough of certain colors because I stole them and used them in other things. And then I'm like, okay, like I totally will go buy another color. I don't care, but is it going to be the same dye lot? And it's just this big thing. And I think that's why I haven't stitched on this in a long time. Um, I'm stitching this on 36 count Edinburgh linen, linen in platinum. Wow. I have a lot more done on that than I thought. Look at that. And I haven't worked on this in forever. But that border is a beast. I mean, those flowers are dense. And I'm really dreading this grass down here. I think that's all endive. Um... That is so much grass. Look at that. You know what I think I would do with that one? And I never, like when I'm using um, variegated floss, I do each X individual. But I think in this case, I would do half stitches one way and half stitches the other. I think you'd still get a lot of variegation. And I think that's the only way I could stitch that much solid and dive. Like, don't you agree? Wow, that is really pretty. I really love the way this looks. It's all the called for floss and they look really good. I should stitch on that some more. Um, next up, I believe, yes, this is Primitive Needle, Salem Remembered, and this is my working copy. I don't really have a picture with it because it's my working copy. But um, I'm stitching this on Old Massachusetts 40 Count by Primitive Hair, which is my favorite linen. Look how pretty it is. It's so pretty. And here's what I have started, done. I'm not using the, it only calls for like three colors and I'm not using the called for. I just substituted like color and cottons. The funny thing about this one is it's actually like, I, it's a, it's a big long piece, but it's actually, I think, a, a really quick stitch because it's just names, which are 
you know, words stitch really fast, so I just need to like, I need, just need to knock that one out. Um, primitive needle, if you don't know, which most of you probably do, um, is like extremely hard to find. Um, it comes up for, for eBay auction pretty often, but, um, sometimes the prices get a little crazy, but sometimes they're not too bad. Um, this pattern, well, Salem Remembered and this pattern, which is hollow, are two that I see, um, not go for reasonable prices. They usually go for somewhere around a hundred dollars, which is, I know, is like, ugh. I wouldn't pay that for them. Um, this is my working copy, but this is Witch's Hollow, and I got this for $5 at my crafty thrift store, and it's probably the find of a lifetime. And I didn't even know, like, I, I almost was like, I don't think, I, I don't know if I want to stitch that. But I was like, I think Primitive Needle is kind of hard to find. You know what, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it, like, and then decide later. And I'm so glad I did because then I did get more into that prim style and I did want to stitch it. But also like I showed it on my video and I'm like, yeah, I got this for $5 at my thrift store. And Diana from It Is Kismet um, messaged me and she's like, wow, that's like such a crazy find. Do you know how much those sell for? And I was like, no, I didn't look. And she's like, yeah, they usually go for like $100. And I was like, oh. So anyway, um, the reason I'm telling you all this is because I know some of you are going to see these patterns and be like, oh my God, I want that. And I just want to give you a fair warning. If it's a primitive needle pattern, unfortunately, it's, it's probably gonna, you know, there could be some sticker shock. And, um, I just also want to throw out that um, stitchers are very generous. If you post on Instagram that you're looking for something, sometimes people will message you and be like, hey, you can borrow mine. So just, you know, I don't know, maybe go that route. I've, I've definitely had people like, um, you know, things I casually mention in my videos, people have been like, oh, I have that. Do you want to borrow it? And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. So don't spend a hundred dollars on it is what I'm saying. Um, anyway, here's Witch's Hollow and, um, Primitive Needle is definitely one of my favorite, favorite designers. Um, and she does, she did a lot of, um, Halloween-y kind of witchy stuff. And my other favorite is Primitive Hair. Love Primitive Hair. So I'm stitching this on 40 count Murky, which is the best. Is that I know a lot of you love murky as much as I do, but God, I love it. That is just amazing. And here, I really need to get back to this one. I was using it a lot for School of Magical Stitches before I dropped out. But um, this one is so fun to stitch because you just, you do these little motifs and you get all these little like cute finishes as you go through it. Um, the witch, the clock tower took forever. But the good news is that that's like the most dense stitching on this pattern. And then after that, they get a little more like spread out. So it is a really big piece, but I think it's doable. Like, look, these are the two biggest things to do. And I'm almost done with those two. And then the rest is like little stuff. So I should try to knock that out. Um, whips, whips, whips. I have so many whips. I think I'm going to work on this one soon because I think this could be a finish, um, quickly. This is Witchy Stitcher Ouija Board. And I'm stitching this on a 28 count Monaco that I dyed myself. And I'm really proud of because I love the way it came out. Um, this is the same fabric that I did my Hocus Pocus on. I just cut a little piece off of it. Um, and here is my Ouija board. I don't have a ton done. No, but it's not a ton of stitching on here. So I just need to buckle in and do it. 
Someone finished this and they um, they finished fully finished it in a tray and it looks so cool. So if I can find like the right size tray, I would totally do that. This is Barbara Anna Designs and I really, really love Barbara Anna for Halloween stuff too. Um, this is the Rampant Cat Sampler and it says All Hallows Eve there at, in the middle top. Um, which is what makes it more Halloween-y. And there's some cats and crows and stuff on it. This is a 32 count um, Jobelin that I tea and coffee dyed. And I'm laughing because it really took the dye. I was just saying how Jobelin doesn't take dye, but look at this one was white. That really took the dye. Um, I'm stitching it with the called for DMCs and I don't have a lot done. But that's what I got done. This is Pineberry Lane, Autumn on Marigold Lane. Which is a really cute pattern. Um, this is on, um, do I know the linen? It might be mystery. Nope, it's a 36 count Lakeside Linen 36 count Vintage Light Exemplar, which is also one of my favorite um, prim linens. Thought I had more done than this. That's just sad. I'm playing um, border chicken with this one for sure because I still have to put a big black um, pot down here at the bottom. So I probably left myself like half an inch margin. You know, old me was, sometimes I wonder what she was thinking. And sometimes I have to double check. Like when I pull one of these old whips out, sometimes I have to get my cross stitch calculator out and redo the math. Cause I'm like, I know I didn't leave a big margin, but did I even leave enough margin? And there's been like two I can think of where I was like, no, I did not. What was I doing? So, um, Stacy Nash Blackwater Hollow Sampler. This is another one I think could, I was going to say, I think I could do it really quick and then I <laughs> It's pretty big. I don't know. Um, sometimes I do get like goggles, you know, when I'm doing these projects and I'm like, yeah, 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 I could totally like that won't take very long at all. And then, you know, three weeks later, I'm like, oh my God. Um, this is 36 count platinum by Zweigart, I believe. And here's how far I am on that. And it's all the called for colors. which I believe I poached from Jack's Bash, a lot of those colors. Um, here's my Hade that I haven't worked on in a long time, but I do love her. Um, it's uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffith, Mina, Mini Milagros La Luna. I actually have this print from Jasmine and she signed it. I love her artwork. She does these beautiful, like, big-eyed fairy girls. Um, she's originally from Kansas City. She lives in Florida now. Um, but I, she, uh, every year at the Renaissance Festival in Kansas City, she has a booth, um, more than a booth. She has, like, a whole building. And she sells all her prints and original artwork and this, like, glorious, um, and I discovered her before I even was a cross stitcher because I just liked her art. Um, and Heaven and Earth Designs has a ton of her art, if anybody's interested. And here's how far I got on that, which I think is actually quite a bit. It's a small haid. It's one of the little ones. It's only 261 by 325. Only, only. Um, but it is, it's, it's small ish for a Hade. I'm doing it on 28 count one over one. So it's 
when I'm done, it's going to be like, you know, maybe five by seven ish. It's going to be really little. It's actually fun to stitch. I just, you know, it's intimidating. Hades intimidate me. And that's why I don't have any others. That's the only one I have. Um, this is another one I was thinking of getting out because I think I could possibly like finish this in a reasonable amount of time. This is the little stitcher on Etsy. It's the Adams family. And it's just a DMC, which is what I'm using. And the linen, I believe, is, um, I think it's, I got it on one, two, three stitch. I think it's mallow. I'm pretty sure it's mallow. And it's like a, is it, it's a 40 count. And I think it's a, it's a Zweigert. And that's how far I got them. <laughs> I have like nothing done on that. That's like one day of stitching. But I'm like, yeah, I can knock that out. See, this is one, again, where I deceive myself because I think like, oh, that's not very much stitching. I could totally do that really quick. But I bet it's like more stitching than I think it is. I do still think it won't take that long. I really don't think it will take that long. But probably longer than I think it will. This is another one that I need to just finish. It's Primitive Hair, Lizzie Borden. And I'm, I think this fits with the Halloween, don't you? I hand, this is Monaco that I dyed myself. No, it's not Monaco. It's just some kind of linen. I think it was just a white linen. And I actually am half done with this one and I do just need to finish it. It's really quite small. And it's just DMC. And it's a lot of words, so those would stitch up quickly. So I need to just get her done. We're almost done with whips. Um, this is Quaker Gun Haunted by Michelle Inc. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I bought all the called for flosses because um, they're really fun. It calls for some um, Gentle Art Simply Wool, which I had never used before. It calls for Bayberry and Driftwood. I would never used the Simply Wool. And then it called for some Silken Colors, Smokestack, Blackened Grass, and what was the other one? Plum, I can't say that word, Plum Guiken. It's this color. It's really cool. So it calls for these beautiful silks. So it's just fun, like fun fibers. It's only like five of them, but they're fun. I am stitching this on um, the coloring cotton linen that came in the Halloween mystery box last year. And it looks so good. It looks so good. Oh my God. Look at this linen. I love it. It's got like teal and purple. The overall tone is like greenish. I love this linen. I love the way this looks on this linen. And I really just need to get back to this because it is really fun. It's really fun. And I love everything about it. <laughs> So another Quiltify design from Etsy. This is All Souls Veerlanden. It's a very popular pattern. I'm doing mine on um, 40 Count Vintage Buttercream by Lakeside Linens. I'm stitching with this DMC Caloris. It's 4522 and I'm like, I, I've... Every time I go to Michael's, I like try to pick it up again. I already have five skeins. I have plenty to finish this project, but I always want to buy it because I just love it so much. It's like purple and green and brown and um, black. It's just so cool. And I do want to, I'll probably end up doing another monochrome sampler in this floss because I just love it so much. Like I think I'm going to do a prairie moon, like thine is the trick or something like that in that floss. And here's how far I got on that. There's more accurate linen. It's yellowy, a yellowy linen. 
I love that. I just have so many whips, you guys. So many. We're almost done, though, with the whips. We're like an hour in, and I didn't even do stash yet. This might need to, you know what, This should this be a two-parter? I have so much stash. This is going to be a two-hour video, and I am hungry. It's lunchtime. Ugh. Blackbird Designs Away We Ride. Very popular pattern. We're going to make this two parts because it's already an hour. It's going to take another hour to do the other part. Um, this is our, on R&R &R Linen Plum Street Blend. It's a 36 count. I really do love the color of this linen. Um, it's this really cool gold. Can, do you sense a theme for Halloween? I like these goldish um, linens. Um, all the called for colors. And here's how far I am on that one, which is not very far. And my last whip is Samplers and Stories, which is an Etsy seller, and it is called Herbal Grimoire. And this is another one that I could probably just knock out if I would just devote a little bit of time. It's on Exju Designs um, 40 count. Yes, 40 count linen in dark sand and I'm stitching it calls for I think it just calls for like 2 DMC but I'm stitching mine with hickory sticks and that's all the farther I got on it but it's not a lot of stitching to it so um Audrey Stitchy Witch 42, she stitched this and what she did that was really cool was she made like the, I think, I don't know if she made, I'd have to go look at her picture, but she definitely made some of the flowers, um, a purpley color that she had ha hand dyed herself. And she sent me a skein of that and she's like, you know, you could use it in herbal grimoire. And I was like, I might have to do that. But then I never stitched on it again. Um, as I look at this linen, I think the color she dyed might work. I need to grab it. It's just in one of these bends right behind me. I need to grab it and hold it against this fabric and see. So I might copy her on that because she did dye that you know, and was nice enough to send it to me. And I did like the way hers looked. This looks really cool as like a monochrome, but, um, it looks really cool with like the pop of lilac that, that Audrey did. Okay. So those are all my whips. So all my finishes and all my whips and we're an hour in and I still have, <laughs> I still have all of this which is mostly charts. I've got some fully kitted ready to start and then 90 freaking charts. So we're going to do a part two. So part one is going to be FFOs and whips. Part two is going to be things we've kitted up that are ready to go and all the stash. So if that sounds appealing to you, look for part two. All right. I'm calling it. I'm going to eat lunch. I'll see you guys later.